19 all the way. Let's turn to 632 until then.
Turn now to 523, My Faith Has Found a Resting Place.
Happy Sabbath. It's nice to see everyone here. Um, just a few announcements we have here. Um, the prayer meeting is continuing on Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. We did invite everyone to come and be blessed. We're reading through the book, The Story of Redemption. And I don't think there is any other greater, more wonderful story than the story of redemption and what God has done for us and how he's worked through the ages to touch people's lives and, and try and draw us to him so that we can have a much more abundant life in him. Uh, just a reminder, the next board meeting will be in September, September 12th, so you've got all summer to think about things you want to discuss. <laughs> And uh, ask uh, that the congregation would please remember the piano fund, the church clean, and the student aid in their giving. These areas could use a little attention, and so we just, that's why we uh, remind you if you have uh, some offering that you'd like to uh, direct in that way. We'd appreciate that. Uh, some business to take care of. This is the second reading of the membership transfer for Barry Hubley from Moncton SDA Church to Tantallon SDA Church. I'd like to entertain a, a motion to accept uh, Barry into our uh, church membership. Okay, do we have a second? Okay, uh, I'd like uh, those, all those in favor, please raise your hand. Thank you, it is carried. We also have a second reading for a membership transfer of his wife, Marilyn Hubley, from the Moncton SDA Church to Tantallon SDA Church. Again, I need a, a first and a second for that. Thank you. And all those in favor? All right, it's carried. Uh, Barry and Marilyn tend to join us online, so I'd like to welcome you to our uh, church membership. We're very pleased to have you added to our number, and I know they were visiting here a few weeks ago, so we would just like to say you're welcome to visit us anytime you are able. We thank you that you join us online. Okay, at this time... Um, I was just going, yes. Uh, not a new member, but you can stand up. Tariro and uh, Kujiwa, this is Tariro's brother. Oh, visiting. Uh, I know they want to do the, the introduction, but they're in Pagua. Oh, okay. So his name's Tanisha, Tanisha, Tanashi. Tanashi. Okay, so welcome to our church today. Ah, thank you so much. <laughs> We're glad you're worshiping with us. We'd like to just welcome everyone here. I, I know some, some I don't, but we're just thankful that everyone is here worshiping with us, worshiping the Lord today. Um, my, I was just going to make a note. My husband and I have returned from uh, helping with the blind camp that happened at Pugwash this week, and it was truly a blessing. You know, uh, put some of your life in perspective. I th find these people are so inspiring. They have so many physical challenges that they have to deal with, and yet they're just so thrilled to be at Pugwash. They're just happy to be there and to be participating in everything, and it just kind of makes you realize we really need to appreciate what we have more than we do. And so that was a blessing for us. They are going to be getting the, um, the teen camp starts on Monday and then the junior camp following. So if anyone knows any teenagers or junior age campers, like the uh, 8 to 12 range for juniors and the teenagers, uh, that is interested in going to Camp Pugwash, uh, please contact um, uh, Camp, uh, sorry, the Maritime Conference, or you can talk to our, one of our elders here and uh, we'll get you the information because I know there is still room for young people to come, and it's a wonderful place. Uh, they have a really good um, staff right now, and we've really appreciated the, the leadership of a lot of the young adults um, that are leading out, and so it's been a blessing to be there. All right, at this time, we will um, have our call to worship, and we'll transition into our uh, worship of our Lord. Our call to worship comes from Psalm 91, verses 3 to 5, and it's found in your bulletin. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day. 
What a wonderful God we serve. I'd invite you to praise him now as we turn to hymn number 539, I Will Early Seek the Savior. Shall we stand? Page 539. Inviting you all where possible, if you could reverently kneel. Those who cannot, please bow your heads. Most gracious, ever loving Father, we want to thank you so much for bringing us here into your presence on this your day. You are our sovereign, you are our God, and Heavenly Father, we come boldly before your throne of grace, thanking you for all the blessings of this week. Now, as we worship together, Father God, may our worship be in spirit and in truth. We pray in Christ's holy name. Amen. <coughs> Our invitation to give is to the local church budget. Okay, so if you live in the States, it would be Independence Day, and of course in Canada, it's uh, Canada Day. So independence come, came from no longer being under the British crown. Uh, so some might compare this to a child growing up and becoming independent of one's parents something pseudo or fabricated until there's financial independence as well. So Independence Day, uh, which would happen in the U.S., for your nation or for kids who grow up and stand on their own, how does this compare to our relationship with God? When do we declare our independence from him? Is this something we forge or is it merely fictitious? 
Does our increase in responsibility release God to care for others who need him more? Consider ancient or more recent history, and you'll find throughout Earth's orbits around the sun that our independence from God might find a place in our imagination, but not in reality. Can you change the Earth's, Earth's rotation? Add 100 years to your life? Make an actual sunset rather than just paint it on canvas? Answer the individual prayers of billions of people each day. Put your finger on subatomic particles or change a heart of stone to a heart of flesh? You don't need to. God remains in control, invites you to be interdependent with him rather than independent of him. So make this Sabbath your interdependence day by giving to God who gives life to you. What a wonderful blessing. We don't have to be alone in anything. We don't become independent from God. He's always there for us, and that's good news. So I'd invite you to bow your heads with me, and we'll pray over the offering. Your loving Heavenly Father, we just thank you that you are always there for us, and you always give us what we need, and you supply us with the things that we enjoy in this life. We thank you, Lord, for the privilege we have of being able to give back a portion of what you've given to us so that others may be helped, so your gospel can spread, so that projects can be done that will help people to know of your love and be able to build a relationship with you. So we thank you, Lord, and we pray that you would bless all the offerings that are given to you, whether they're online or in our box at the back. And uh, we thank you, Lord, again, for being with us and for all you do for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. Are we having a children's story or not? Are there any children? Yes. There are so many children out there. <laughs> <laughs> All children are proud. He wasn't sure if it applied just to younger ones more. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Are you wanting to save it for another time or are you wanting to do that? It's up to you. <laughs> Okay, Tara will bring us our children's story. We're just short a little bit of children, so maybe there'll be some children watching online that will, yeah, that will enjoy this. Thank you. Good morning, children. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> and good morning, children online. Hopefully, there's a whole lot of you there. Good morning, Amaya. <laughs> this morning, we're going to read a passage from Scripture, Matthew 7, 13 and 14. So I'm going to do that. Oops. I'm dropping things. Oh. I'm going to do that in two different versions. So we will start out with the King James Version, because that's the one that I have at home that I use the most. And we're just going to read that together. And maybe you can turn with me there. Matthew, to the bigger children who know how to use the books. <laughs> Matthew 7, verses 13 and 14. Matthew 7, 13 and 14. Are you there? Amen. Everybody's there. Okay. So I'm going to read it nice and slow. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there he which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be he that find it. Reading it from the clear word. Whoops. Don't follow the crowd. The road leading to destruction is wide and easy. And many are on it. The gate is small, and the road is narrow that leads to life, 
and only a few look for it and find it. Can any of you tell me what the difference between broad and narrow is? Just give me a simple, just a simple answer. What is the difference between broad and narrow? Size. Size. Okay. Can you give me an example of something that's broad? A one-way street on a highway? A one-way one street on a highway? <laughs> Oh, a highway. I would think a highway has a lot of lanes, so I would consider that pretty broad. And give me an example of a narrow way. Oh, I see, I see, I, the, com the comparison. Okay. Have you ever heard of a man named, put, is it, hold on, again. His last name is Petit. Again. Philippe, Philippe Petit. Philippe Petit was a 25-year-old aerialist. And he loved to walk on a very narrow rope. <laughs> and so one day when he was at the dentist, I was told, he saw a picture in a magazine of New York City's World Trade Center. And he said, hmm, I think I'd like to walk across those two towers. <laughs> he says, I think I'm going to make it a purpose to go all the way to New York and get a rope across those two towers and walk across those two towers on the rope. Now, would you consider a rope a little more narrow than a one-way street? Just a bit. But he had a goal. He had a goal. So. He used to walk across two cathedrals when he was in Paris, because he did this all the time. This was normal for him. So I'm just thinking to myself, if you walk between two cathedrals, I'm sure you could walk across two buildings. So he did. He purposed in his heart to go all the way to New York, flew all the way to New York, and somehow, without security knowing, he got into the building, went all the way to the top, and somehow got that rope across to the other side, don't ask, I have no idea. It didn't go into details. But they got that rope across, and he, with a big stick, because I think you need a stick, because I don't think you could do it without a stick. <laughs> a big stick made it his purpose to walk across those two towers. And I can't really show you from here, but that's him. There's the World Trade Center right there. There's the rope. Can't really see the other building, but that's him. He actually did it. In fact, at one point, he laid down on the rope. <laughs> okay, he laid down, and he had himself there lying on the rope looking up at the sky. At another point, he got down on, I think it's one foot, and he kind of did this pistol thing, and I was just like... Wow, I forgot I had a microphone. Um, yes, yeah, so, this is Philippe Petit. But he had a goal, did he not? And the Lord saved this man. I have to say the Lord saved him <laughs> because I don't know how else you could be saved doing something that crazy. But the Lord also asks us to do something too. I don't believe that he really wants us to go in the broad way. The reason why is because it says it leads to destruction and he wants to give us life. Have any of you heard, do any of you know who Ellen White is? Ellen White was a wonderful messenger for the Lord, and she had a vision, the Lord gave her a vision, of the people of God walking on a straight and very narrow path on their way to, the, on the way to their heaven. And in that vision, one thing that, that always stands out in my mind is that we need to keep our eyes on Jesus, because if we don't, we can fall off the path. And that's what I consider the broad way. The broad way is the, the easy way right? Anything that gets us distracted and gets our eyes off of Jesus is the broad way. So the Lord now is asking us, because he wants to give us life, to walk on the narrow way. And even though it's hard, because it says it's hard, it's possible because we have our eyes on Jesus. Simple? 
<laughs> so, <laughs> it sounds simple, but it really is when you put it, I mean, it says that the way is hard, and the only way it's because it's hard, it's because it's hard for us, because we don't keep our eyes on Jesus. But what makes it possible, I didn't say easy, I said possible, is us keeping our eyes on Jesus the whole way there. So you may be on a, a rope like this, and you may stumble, and you may even fall off, but make sure you get right back on, because that's what he told us to do, because he said it's possible to get to the kingdom with our eyes on Jesus. I'm sorry? All things are possible with God. Amen? Thank you very much for listening. Shall we bow our heads for prayer? Father, thank you so much that you have enabled us and empowered us to do what you have asked us to do and given us everything we need, and that's Jesus. Help us to keep our eyes on you. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you for listening, children. a little bit technically challenged at times. <laughs> we miss our tech person. She's up at camp. <laughs> but they need her there. So, All right, we're going to move into our scripture reading, which comes from Matthew chapter 7. And you'll probably never guess what it is, right? <laughs> uh, the children's story was coordinated with the sermon. So we've got, a, we've got a team working here, Peter and Tara working together. So Matthew 7, verses 13 and 14. And it says, enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and there are many who go in by it, because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. I'd invite you now to uh, bow with me for a prayer. Dear loving Heavenly Father, we want to thank you that you have brought us here today. And Lord, as we are privileged to be in your house worshiping you in peace, we think of those who are displaced or have, have not got the freedom to worship you. People around the world who are persecuted for their faith. And we pray, Lord, that you would uh, be near to them and comfort them and uh, watch over them. And we ask, Lord, that you would be with those who have, uh, who have not been able to join us today, wherever they may be. Some have um, work that they're doing for you elsewhere. Some may be on vacation. Some are not well and in need of comfort. And wherever they may be, Lord, we just ask you to watch over uh, wherever your sheep are today and that you would give them a Sabbath blessing. I pray now, Lord, that you would be with Peter as he brings the message, that uh, our ears and our hearts would be open to hear what you have to say through him, that your spirit would uh, be speaking through him and be speaking to our hearts, and that uh, the things we hear today will draw us closer to you, that we will walk more closely with you, and that when we leave this place, we will have a greater appreciation of your love for us. We thank you now for being with us today and for all your many blessings. In Jesus' name, amen.
Okay, at this time, we're going to have Sylvia Gallant bring us our special music, and then uh, Peter will be bringing our message. Jesus calls us to be on the narrow path, and if we keep our eyes on him, he will, is faithful to keep us on that narrow path. Great is thy faithfulness. Thank you very much for that song. 
Aren't we privileged that we have a God who is so faithful to us, his children? As I stand before you this morning, it is always my pleasure to share God's words with my brothers and sisters in the faith. It is a solemn thing to be used by the Lord, and it's a great honor to be in this family here in Tantalon. A quote by uh, Noam Chomsky, as it relates to the significance of words, because words are very important. I myself have difficulty pronouncing certain words words or terminology, Um, but I push forward because I believe if the Lord impresses you to say something, say it. We don't know who our words will touch. It may not be eloquent or fluid, but God has called us to be in service on behalf of others. Technology is also a language that we all may not be familiar with, but we'll do our best so that God's word could be presented through this medium of the internet. Norm Scott, uh, Chomsky's quote it says, A language is not just words, it's culture, a tradition, a unification of a community, and a whole history that creates what a community is. It's all embodied in a language. We, as Seventh day Adventists, have some terminology that are very familiar to us, but not very familiar to other Christians or other faith groups. Examples are justification by faith, spirit of prophecy, the resurrection of the dead, the state of the dead, the last judgment, the substitutionary atonement, the investigative judgment, sanctification, Christ our righteousness, and also the incarnation of Christ himself. These are words and terminology that we use very loosely, but not all may understand that language that we're speaking. God the Father because of his great love for us, gave his only begotten son, his son, Yahshua the Messiah, Christ Jesus, emptied himself to redeem us from this world of sin. Now the divine spirit works with us to convict us of truth, righteousness, and judgment. To reestablish in us the opportunity for eternal life. Today, in this country, we're celebrating Canada Day. Across this wonderful landscape, from coast to coast, north to south, east to west, ocean to ocean, people of different creeds, colors, and cultures from across the spectrum of this globe who have landed here for generations and some newcomers are all celebrating the freedom that we now have in this wonderful country that God has allowed us to live in. We should be thankful and grateful for God to God for this freedom. We as the faithful remnant church must recognize also though that our adversary is working continuously to bring confusion, corruption, and chaos to this country and to God's end time church. 
some of this me his method is for us to develop a critical spirit or lack compassion or to be judgmental of others. But Christ speak about this in Matthew chapter 7. And I'm going to read verse 1 through 14. I'm going to read it twice. The first version is from the clear word version. And then I'll read the King James Version. So Matthew 7, 1 through 14. Christ is talking about judging. I read, don't judge others or you will be judged. Remember, the same rules you use to judge others, God will use to judge you. Also, the same lack of mercy you show to others will be turned and measured out to you. Why do you keep pointing this to the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye when you don't pay attention to the log in your own eyes? Why are you so eager to take the speck out of your brother's eye when you still have piece of wood in your own? You hypocrites, first look at your own faults and correct them. Then you'll be better able to see and to help others. Don't give food from the temple to a pack of hungry dogs or throw pearls to the pigs. The dogs will attack you and the pigs will trample on the pearls. They don't know the difference. Ask your heavenly Father for wisdom and he will give it to you. Look for spiritual riches and you will find them. Knock on heaven's door and it will be opened for you. Anyone who asks will receive. Anyone who looks will find. And anyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Now just think what parent would give his son a rock when he asked for a piece of bread. Or what caring parents would give a child a dish of poison when they ask for food. Parents who love their children don't do that. How much more would your heavenly father give good things to those who ask? So do the same good things to others that you would, not, would want them to do to you. That's what the law and the prophets are all about. Don't follow the crowd. The road leading to destruction is wide and easy, and many are on it. The gate is small, and the road is narrow that leads to life. And only a few look for it and find it. The King James Version, which many of us are also familiar with, state the same sentiment. But verse 13 and 14, which I will focus on this morning, as the Lord leads me, as I share his words with you. Because I am share, as I'm sharing with you, I'm also learning. 13 says, Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. My question to you this morning, Church of the Living God, is it possible for everyone to fit through a narrow place or space at the same time? No. Second question, then, if God says that the gate is narrow, does that mean God is inclusive? 
or is he exclusive? Does that mean that God is inclusive or exclusive? Just think about it. The gate is narrow, and not all will find it. Now, God calls us to obedience and to repentance. As we follow his counsel, some will find it. But if we choose to do our own thing, then we may not find that narrow gate. This morning, we'll touch on these three parts. Straight is the gate, narrow is the way, and third, which lead it unto life. Straight gate in the Bible concordance talks about narrow, like a narrow way. Straight is also used um, to body of water, like the one of the most popular, the Strait of Gibraltar, where it divides two bodies of water. It divides the Atlantic Ocean from the Mediterranean Sea. In the spiritual context, a straight gate could mean a narrow way from earth to glory, from this world to the heavenly. We get a glimpse of that in Jacob. Jacob had a dream, and Jacob in his dream saw this ladder going from earth to heaven, from heaven to earth. Would that be a wide road? Or a narrow road. The significance of this dream is that heaven is open to us. And heaven is available to us. And messengers are going back and forth to counsel us, to advise us, to encourage us along this narrow way. At the end of the service today, if I say... If everybody tries to leave throughout that door, would it be something that's done in order or would it be something that's possible if everyone at the same time tries to go out that door? No. God has a plan and God is a God of order. With his plan on the narrow way, we can be successful and we can have life eternal. John 4, 6 says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man hath come unto the Father except by me. Except by me. Christ is the way. Is that a broad way or a narrow way? Proverbs 3, 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not unto your own understanding. In all your way acknowledge him, and he will make straight your path. We don't travel these roads alone, brothers and sisters. Narrow is the way. And in Deuteronomy 5, 32, I read. Deuteronomy 5, 32, I read. Therefore, you shall be careful to do as the Lord God has commanded you. You shall not turn aside to the right hand or to the left. In Deuteronomy 17, 11. Deuteronomy 17, 11. We read, according to the sentence of the law in which you, they instruct you, according to the judgment which they tell you, you shall do. You shall not turn aside to the right hand or to the left. Straight. Another text in Deuteronomy 28:14. So you shall not turn aside from any of the words which I command you this day 
to the right or to the left. Question. What happens to a person that is walking across a narrow, like in Tara's story, elevated place? Can that person turn to the right or to the left? No. That person would be in critical danger of falling off. Fallen potentially to their demise. So on the narrow way, you have to be straight and you have to be focused. You have to keep her eyes on the goal and keep her eyes on the prize. God is calling us to pay attention to the times we are living in. We today with this current programming, are being told that feelings are the gauge or the parameter of what is truth. However, our guide, the Bible, tells us that sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. That's found in John 17. Lean me in your truth, And teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. Psalms 25, 5. You see, Church of the Living God, man was formed in the likeness of God. His nature was in harmony with the will of God, his mind capable of comprehending divine things. His affections were pure. His appetite and passion were under the control of reason. Mankind's feeling and emotion must be subject to logic and wisdom, Church of the Living God. Today, many are being coerced. And the multitude, by the multitude to doubt common sense data and millennium of natural development. The concept of thus saith the Lord has become unimportant and a byword for others. Secret global movements and agendas have developed by men and their cohorts are readily to implement the deceptions. The purpose is to distract Humanity from the pleasant, present conflict of this age. Second Thessalonians 2, 3 and 4. Second Thessalonians 2, 3 and 4 says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day will not come, except there be a fallen away first, and that the man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. The son of perdition opposed and exalted himself above all that is God or that is worship so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God showed himself that he is God. That's what the son of perdition, perdition wants to do. Therefore he fills the earth with deception. God is counseling us to stay on the narrow way, the church of the living God. And as you stay on the narrow way, that will lead to life. Who is the author of life? And who is the giver of life, church of the living God? Who is the author of life and who is the giver of life? Our Father in heaven. Thank you. Jeremiah 1, 5 says, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. In Isaiah 44, 24 and 26, 
I read in your hearing. Thus saith the Lord, your Redeemer, who formed you from the womb. I am the Lord who made all things, who alone stretched out the heavens, who spread out the earth by himself. That is the giver of life, the Lord our creator, who frustrate the signs of liars and make fools of diviners, who turns wise men back and makes their knowledge foolish, who confirms the word of his servant and fulfills the counsel of his messengers. Then in Job 3, 4, it says, The Spirit of the Lord has made me and breathe, and the breath of the Almighty gave me life. You see, Church of the Living God, man is allotted or assigned. Man is assigned a part in the great struggle for everlasting life. He must respond to the working of the Holy Spirit. It will require a struggle to break through the powers of darkness. It will require a struggle to break through the power of darkness. And the Spirit works in him to accomplish it. The Spirit works in us to accomplish it. We cannot be passive, though, in this. We cannot be idle. We cannot be lazy. We cannot prost- procrastinate. We are called upon to strain every muscle and exercise every faculty in the struggle for immortality and eternal life, brothers and sisters. Church of the living God, we are living in the closing scenes of earth history. Prophecy is fulfilling. The hours of probation probation are fast passing. We have no time, not a moment to lose. Let us not be found sleeping on guard. Let no one say in his heart by his work, my Lord delayeth his coming. Let the message of Christ soon return, sound forth in earnestness and in words of warning to those who we come in contact with on a daily basis. Let us persuade men and women everywhere to repent and flee from the wrath and the danger to come. We must prepare to meet him, our coming Lord and Redeemer, in peace. Let us be determined to do all in our power to impart light to those around us. We are not to be sad, but to be cheerful. We are to keep the Lord... Lord Jesus, ever before us, is coming, is soon, and we must be ready and waited for his appearing. Church of living God, we can have confidence that we can be ready to make it home as his redeemed ones, even though we are counseled in Matthew 7, 13 and 14. Enter ye at the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go thereout. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Why can't we be confident? Numbers 23, 
19 tells me, God is not a man that he should lie. And 1 Samuel 15, 29 says, The glory of Israel will not lie or change his mind. And then Matthew 24, 35 says, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. That's why we can be confident, because we have a sure word, God's sure word. God is doing a work in us and is working through us. He gives, he gives the successes. He is our efficiency. He will bring the results. He is the Lord of the harvest. He is the Lord of the harvest. So as I close, my brothers and sisters, God's word to you this morning is this, hold fast till I come. This is the sweet promise of heaven. The kingdom restore and to you and to you and to you it shall be given. Come, enter my joy. Sit down on the throne for our crowds are awaiting. Hold fast till I come. Hold fast, church of the living God. Hold fast to the narrow way. Hold fast, we shall see our love and redeemer at last. Hold fast, brothers and sisters, hold fast. May God richly bless you always. Our closing hymn would be hymn number 416.
Most gracious Heavenly Father, we can stand in that great day because we have accepted the sacrifice of your Son, Christ Jesus, on Calvary. And we have been obedient to your command. And we've allowed your Holy Spirit to live within our hearts. So, Father God, it's because of your grace, love, and mercy we stand before you today to ask you to accept us, your children, to mold us after your likeness, and to recreate in us a clean heart and a right spirit. Now, as we go our separate ways today, Father God, we pray that you'll take us to a various destination in safety. Continue to abide with us and those who we come in contact with, Father God. Help us to have a word to say on your behalf. This is our prayer in Christ's holy name. Amen. Yeah. 